We're back. Uh, my first guest does just about everything you can do in the entertainment business and does it extremely well. He's an actor, comedian, a writer, producer, a director, and I consider a good friend. His latest movie is called The Man with Two Brains, which stars Steve Martin, who will be coming out in July. Mr. Carl Reiner. Welcome to our first... You know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm changing the tempo of the show. You guys were playing... And I think your usual thing, last year you were... A little more tempo to the show. Yeah, something happened over the New Year's holiday that slowed you down. Well, you have an eye for these things. Yes, I said... I said you are today. You did your monologue exactly the way you would do if you were a professional and didn't care. <laughs> you, you, you mean kind of uh, yes. easy and... You uh, did it right. It was perfect. I mean, uh, if it was the first time out, they say, that man's a comer. Right. Yes, but right now it looks like you're a goer. You want to, <laughs> a little more professionalism is what you're yeah. saying. I, I see. It's I brought a, you here on the first show of 1983 to pick on me you know, right away. You know something? When, I, when Shirley or whoever it was that called me and said yeah. they want me for the first show of 1983, I was so proud until it always occurs to me because right. we who are insecure say, who fell out? <laughs> that means who well, did you, not. Who uh, did not, who was supposed to be here you know bigger and more important people than me. Well, now you and are. I, now well, you are. You see that's No, insecure. I know. I do know. Johnny, I've read some in the Rolling Stone article. You mentioned me among the that five or true. six people that you like to have on. That's right. And I really believe it. But I think for ratings, you're better off having a big buxom woman um, <laughs> or a handsomer young man. Oh, you know? no, I don't believe that. You don't believe no. that? No, I like hearing that. But somebody must. You would have rather have Pavarotti. Or well, Placido uh, Domingo. No, I mean, be, be honest. Be honest. If you if it's you saw a list, they said you can have Carl on Tuesday, on Tuesday, the first show back, or Luciano Pavarotti or Placido Domingo. What would you have said? Well, no, I, don't think, I don't think that's fair. Uh, uh, exactly, because you both uh, are good in different areas. Yes. Uh, for a singer, I would want Placido Domingo, if they were going to sing, of course. I see. To be a raconteur. You see. I would. But you would have preferred him. No. You are insecure, aren't you? Yes. Oh, of course. You believe that myth that every, all of us in show business are basically insecure? That's why we are out here, in, in essence, asking the audience to. Do I believe it? Like we his... prove it every day. Yeah. I mean, I watch you when he got a telegram or a, a Christmas card from President from Reagan. President Reagan. You were, that was from the heart. You I, were well, so hurt. You I were like a little boy. I felt terrible well, for I, you. Well, I got my card. You did get oh, a yes. card? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. What did it say? Merry Christmas. What else? <laughs> You say but you're drafted. You got, you got your card after you cried. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, you see, uh, the president had sent uh, his card here. I see. The president had my home address. Oh. So oh. mine. <laughs> I see. His came to occupant NBC. <laughs> announcer. Announcer. <laughs> big announcer NBC. Mine came right to my home. But we are insecure, and we will prove that right after this. <laughs> we'll come back, and we will give you proof. Of it. We're back with Luciano Pavarotti tonight <laughs> and Placido Thank you. Domingo. Thank you. Thank you. Do, do you speak a little Italian? A little, very little. You I do phonetic I, stuff. You I do, do phonetic. double talk. Um, but you do it well. All those years on the show of shows with Sid, you, you know, do Italian uh, double talk, French double talk. You know something talk. I never did my whole life on the air is, see, Placido and Pavarotti um, score very big on your show. You know why? Or all of those opera singers do. They sing the big arias. You can't fail with uh, um, El Luce in Le Stello, Ridi Pagliacci. You can't fail with that. No. Anyone could sing that and get a big hand. The it's orchestra, dramatic. The it's dramatic. Nobody, those guys never bother with the beautiful recitatives, the rec recitations that are done in operas. Well, that's in between the... Yes, and I, I, I do that. I could probably... I have a feeling like I could score as big as Pavarotti doing that. Let's give it a try. And if I don't, see? Oh. Okay. And if I don't score, I beg you, I beg you to give me a large applause at the end because people at home are getting sleepy and they don't know if I failed or not, but they'll think I did well because this is really... Do you know what I'm talking about? What would you like? Well, now, this is opera. You guys, I know, know all the notes in this... You in want this. opera? Yes. You got opera. Give him an A. 
Talking about recitative, it's the guys who carry the plot in the opera. They they don't want to sing these long arias. Once they get to a love song, they sing "I love you" forty different ways. But up to that point, to know who's the villain and who's the heroine and hero, they do a lot of talking. And give me a is there a piano player who knows opera? Like give me. Melodio fanciulli parti fiori. Siamo lotti fanti non parli a cielo fe. Compiato vicion bienaro. Si non pieto fanti ronciar. Meno vai nu su chi parla di velo ci fanti provi cato rivenzo li viar. E fosi in barotiero e fosi la portiero e fan cielo e fosi lo a parafi. Pantevo soldi a fago. Then, then they always they, they always have some some they always carry a plot where the, a note comes. Me no me no me han chile por que van que varia que me no te can work with. Ne van chero se lampiero fiton tero tenjer mistro di cuatro mil rosi van do ambiar a vincer ni en prargo. Il faroncello, la vera santiere, grazie di Pierto, il salva, il grande verso il pantio fettia. Bravo, bravo, bravo. Bravo, bravissimo. Bravo. Bravo, bravo, bravissimo. Grazie. Grazie. Bravo, bravo, bravo. That is the that is the first stabbing I've ever heard a rim shot in an opera. Normally they don't do that at the Met, you know. Whop, bang. Well, they they don't stab with pencils at the Met. Does this mean we're off or what? Did I? I thought I was having a migraine. Were the lights were the lights off for just a moment? Yeah. Good. Good. I'm I'm worried because I didn't notice they were. Did you? I thought I was having a coronary. I looked over and I looked at the monitor and I said, it's awfully dark here. Oh, yes. Well, those high notes, will those orthicon tubes, they do. When you hit those, hey! Yes, oh, sure. Yes. See, now he can do it, too. Absolutely right. Now that you know the trick. Yeah, there is one note where they point and then they hold that note. Yes. And that's just to carry the plot, right? Right, I guess. Until the star comes in. Until the star comes in. Do you ever get, do you speak any languages at all, uh, well, semi-fluently or? Uh, yes, uh, I, I almost do, I do fairly well in English. <laughs> I, I'm, a difficult language. I'm aware that I do fairly well. But in, in the army, they taught me to speak French. That was 35 years ago. Right. And we were going to be French interpreters, and they sent us to Hawaii, so I didn't get a chance to practice. <laughs> um, and this last year. The army year, never misses, no, do they? This last year, for the first time, I was so proud of myself, I was, sent by my, the uh, company that did uh, our picture, uh, th the last picture, De right. Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid, to go to France. It opened in France, and it opened very well there. But I did all my interviews, most of them in French. I was on the air, on radio, and on television in French, and they were talking French to me, which was the difficult part. So I asked them, I said, I can speak better than I can understand. So I said, when that man asked me a question, let somebody lean in and translate that long question, and I will try to answer it in French. And I did it. I, act I was then so proud. I wish my mother and father were alive. They were more interested in the fact that I was smart than I was funny. Right. And, and, and they always thought it was wonderful that I did double talk in French. And, right. Uh, they didn't. They told people that I really spoke French. Uh. They thought it was better to be smart than funny. I suppose I would say to you in French, uh, dites-moi, s'il vous plaît, uh, qu'est-ce que c'est? Tell me. What is the word for plot? Plot? Yeah. La sens, uh, je sais le mot pour plot. Uh, le plot des... Uh, L'idée, uh, non, le le the idea. Le, le ciné. The, the, the ciné... Uh, les cadavres ne portent pas de costards. Cadavres don't wear costumes, or don't wear <laughs> suits. Right. That's the way en français. Uh, C'est un, uh, un film noir, 
euh, dans, euh, avec euh, Steve Martin qui joue et euh, euh, dé euh, détective, je ne sais le mot pour détective. Joue euh, young détective. Euh, de gendarmerie, gendarme euh, <rire> privé. privé. Et dans ce film, il a euh, un euh, belle jeune et fille euh, bon, vient. Oui, oui, oui. C'est bon, c'est bon. C'est bon, c'est bon. C'est bon, c'est bon. C'est bon, c'est bon. C'est bon. That's good, that's good. You, do, you, you say yes very well, I like, 30 different ways. I like, I like Jacques Coucou, when he explained the little marine animals, they go into the sea and they yes. think they may not come back to their mother because they are, he attributes, you know, human yes. emotions to animals all the time. Obviously, the octopus is very lonesome. <laughs> You say, how does he know that? Because he is wandering the sea looking for his parents. And you get so caught up in this, you know, the sea slug. You know, that's also a very good language. That's a very good language. Uh, English French. A lot of people understand that. Oui? Yes. I, I taught a course in English French. English French. To Mel Brooks one day. We were sitting alone. This is a good, a good indication of Mel Brooks's genius. Yeah. I was sitting, we were sitting alone in a room and I said, you can play with me. Sure. And at the last, I say, Mel, I'm going to teach. You, I'm going to teach you French now. Say after me. Oui. Say after me the words. Now the word for the tin is tin. 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 Right. Tzin. The word for the tick is tick. 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 Right. The nose. 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 No, 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 no. Nose. 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 You see, the forehead. The thin. The thin. The thin. The thin. Tick, 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 tick. The nose. The forehead. The forehead. No, I said. No, no. No, no. Then I said to Mel, the eye. And, and Mel said, no, no, I need a close up here. I said, the eye. He says, no, no. I said, we, we, we start saying the, the eye. He's no, no, that's below the eye. He said, this is the eye. <laughs> the eye. <laughs> below the eye. This is the eye. Stuck his face right in his eye. You have a, but you have a, an innate ability to pick up sounds, and that comes from uh, that being comes around from a lot being, of different people. Uh, no, that comes from living in a neighborhood where yeah. there were very, very many different languages. Yeah. There was a lot of Italian. There wasn't any French, but we got that in school. It also came from not being too smart in school and having a good ear. Yeah. Rather than do my work, I would listen to the sounds. And rather than knowing what the teacher was saying when she was doing conjugations, I was listening to the way she was saying it, and I would mimic her. We got big laughs that way, but yeah. we didn't get big marks. I feel sorry that I've always, I've always missed that growing up. I grew up in Nebraska. You know, and you don't get a lot of great ethnic culture. Hi, Ed. Ed. Hi, Ed. Where's the corn crib? <laughs> you know, so you, you don't hear. Where's the corn crib, you know? <laughs> so you have to fake it a yes, lot. Yes, but you get applause when you mention your home. Oh, yes. That yes. helps. What else you want to talk about tonight? The picture uh, looks good? Well, the picture looks good. Um, you know what I, you know, you were doing a thing on, on those papers, those newspapers. That we find in the supermarket. What's wrong? Fred is, Fred is having an attack of some kind. What is it, Fred? Oh, no, it's my concern about another guest. Well. It should take a long time. Funny though it may be, we might have a problem. Oh. oh. No, it won't take long. Okay. Take, a, take a couple of minutes, a minute or two. Yeah. What I was saying is that when you, when you started... You started talking about those newspapers. I'll talk very fast, and I'll make sure the guest gets I'm very aware that... Because he's very should, good, Greg Luganis. Uh, uh, terrific right. guest. Um, I, I, when I go to the, news, uh, to the market, I read those newspapers. I don't buy them. I, I hope there's a long line in front of me so I can read all the... Now, I know they're all lies. I know every one of them is lies. But how it, people, myself included, love to read about celebrities. Even if it's a lie, I'd rather read about it. It's so much fun. Yeah. And, and I was saying that even here, people are watching. We could, I could tell you things about celebrities that are total lies. Right, and gonna... people will be so interested. All right. Mel Brooks. And Mel Brooks. Mel Brooks was born a girl. He was, well, it's absolutely true because I've, I've gone to the shower with him. He had, he, um, until he was 15 years old, he lived as a girl. And then his mother, in, th in those days, the, the transplantation was so difficult. But she had it done because she had three boys and she wanted four boys. All right. So she, that's it. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. Oh, look what they're doing. No, Tom Selleck, Tom Selleck, before he became a big star, was the biggest contributor to the sperm bank. And one of his sperm... <laughs> One of his sperm actually was used, oh, uh, you know, Princess Di? Yes. Never was pregnant. She had a surrogate mother. Oh, she come wore, on. She wore pillows. No, no, no. Right, she wore pillows. And Tom Selleck, Tom Selleck. Is the donor? Is the donor to the I, surrogate mother. I and that child, is, that child is going to be king someday as Tom Selleck's child. I didn't know that. That's absolutely true. Absolutely true. Well, one, now, one of these, one more. Yes. I'll give you one more. Absolutely true. All right. 
I'll give you one more because yes. the psychics also yes. predicted Elizabeth something about Elizabeth Taylor. Do you have a prediction about uh, Elizabeth? Elizabeth Taylor is still a virgin. <laughs> no. Elizabeth Taylor, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. No. Now watch it. Watch the truth of the matter. Well, just hear it. She is, the reason she has so many marriages, none of them were consummated, and those men will hang around just so long for beauty and a big bosom. <laughs> but they will not, they, unless they get some of that good stuff, they leave. They divorce. Burton tried it three times. Has true word yet? Absolutely. Okay, you heard it here, folks. Look for your copy. We'll be right back. <laughs> 